Denver through any heavy, send a car to 119.2, good night. 119.2, 1590 heavy. Welcome to our inaugural episode of the uh, Aeropedia podcast. We're very excited to kick things off here. We are. So we're your hosts, uh, Ashwin Yadhav and Peter Soot, and we're excited to have you on board with us. So let's quickly um, introduce the podcast itself and introduce ourselves as well. Um, and, and just let's try to give the audience an understanding of, you know, why have we started this podcast? There's so many podcasts out there already, right, Peter? So why did we specifically want to start something ourselves? So I think when we met each other and talked through things, it was clear that we both love commercial aviation. So, you know, in talking through that, who doesn't love uh, meeting other people that are interested in the same things? And we wanted to introduce this exciting industry to others who might be interested in it. And I think... You know, you hear a lot about pilots and you hear a lot about flight attendants and, and those things that are very tangible and things you people you see in the industry. But there's so much more to this industry. Uh, and I think that's what's really exciting is to introduce all the different aspects of commercial aviation to our audience. So, Ashwin, who do you think should tune in to our podcast with that in mind? Yeah, so the, the idea here is for the Aeropedia podcast to be a very easy listening podcast, um, something that is, you know, high level, basic, um, something that anyone can really tune into to get a better understanding of the aviation industry, right? And and we're talking avid travelers, um, curious minds, young professionals, students, anybody who's not even in aviation today and wants to get into aviation tomorrow um, would really benefit from from this sort of a podcast, right? And I think we wanted to um, really cast a wide net because there, there's so many specialized podcasts out there already. Um, so we wanted this to be unique and very, very entry level, right? So um, basically anyone who wants to learn anything about aviation um, could, could tune in, right? Um, and each guest, um, uh, I think we we kind of wanted to have the uniqueness uh, flow through it. So each guest will have an opportunity to participate in trivia, right? Um, and and you know they'll hope to become kind of the next ultimate av geek through it. Oh yeah, that's the best part I think. Anyway, is the trivia, and we we decided to do that because it's a fun way, like you were saying. Um, just to, to test someone's knowledge, but also learn something in the process. And it's totally fun, easygoing. If, if I think we're going to try it ourselves. And uh, if you get it wrong, you get it wrong. But ultimately, at the end, maybe we'll find a champion, uh, the ultimate trivia champion. So, so yeah. And uh, folks can tune into the podcast on most of the major podcasting platforms like like Spotify, Google, Amazon, Apple, etc. Um, we'll also have um, a video version published on YouTube via the Aeroscope Aviation channel. Um, and we intend to be very active across all of the usual social media channels as well. So, you know, happy to interact with, with all our viewers, our listeners via any of these mediums and, and looking forward to really growing um this um this podcast so um we'll be using the first two episodes um of our podcast to basically introduce each other and interview each other um so peter who's our guest today well thanks for setting that up ashwin uh fancy enough it's you today we're introducing you so are you ready to take off if you like cliches you're gonna like me so <laughs> are you ready to take off yeah i'm ready all right. So first question for you, Ashwin. Uh, what's your earliest aviation memory? So my earliest uh, aviation memory is um, flying uh, to uh, Tokyo, actually. Um, 
and I, I grew up in India, so it was it was basically three legs of uh, of seven four seven Cathay Pacific flight. So we, we went oh, wow. uh, Bombay, Bangkok, Bangkok, Hong Kong, and and Hong Kong, Tokyo, right? And um, I I just th th it was my first flight ever, and I just got introduced to the best of everything, right? We, which is why it it really left. Um, and a great memory in, in my mind. So I, I think in those days, and even today, Cathay Pacific is one of the best airlines in the world. Um, their service was just unparalleled. Um, and then flying the 747 that, that you know, was their absolute flagship um, aircraft and, and flying it for, for three legs uh, was, was a lot of fun, right? Um, I, I remember I was just peeled onto the window I, I just wouldn't move and i i just wanted to look outside and, and see the other planes and um you know for for those who haven't experienced it i would say um landing in hong kong is uh is just it, it's it's beautiful right um because it, it's one of those airports and i guess you have many of these now but but back then it was a very unique airport where you feel like you're literally going to land on water and then suddenly the runway starts, right? Um, so yeah, it, it was it was a great, great experience over the course of those three legs. And um, I kind of got spoiled on on the uh, on all of the legs because uh, I, I kind of felt like I could order anything I wanted and they would just bring it to me. I said, I, I want a Pepsi and they brought me a Pepsi. I want a juice and they brought me a juice, right? So I, I really got spoiled. I got introduced to the best of, of things um, and just that aviation memory just stuck. And I I it made a career out of it uh, after that. That's, that's awesome. Yeah, no, you know, like you said, for that to be your first memory and first experience, one on the 747, which so many people hope to get on, but that wasn't their first flight. And then to fly on Cathay Pacific. Um, and then, yeah, flying into, it would have been Kai Tak there at that point yeah. uh, in Hong Kong. And that was kind of like people's dreams all in one, one trip, it sounds like. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay. Well, thank you for that intro. So question, next question, maybe can you cover your aviation job experiences? So from that introduction, um, spoiled introduction to aviation, how did you get from that to where you are today? Uh, what were the steps you took? Yeah, so I, I kind of was sure that I wanted to get into the industry and, um, you know, I, I couldn't really decide what I wanted to do within the industry. So uh, there was a point when I really wanted to become a pilot, an air traffic controller and a dispatcher all at once. Right. I wanted to do everything. And, um, you know, I, I couldn't. Right. Obviously. So the more I got into um, some of the prerequisites and, and, and science based subjects, the more I realized that. Um, I'm an engineer at, at heart. I like to fix things. I like to troubleshoot. Um, and, and it's more of a, you know, problem solution kind of thing for me. Right. So I, I did my bachelor's and my master's in aerospace engineering. Um, and then following that, um, I got into, um, more of the air traffic management side of things via my research at the time. Right. And that led to, uh, my first job opportunity with the International Air Transport Association, IARA, in uh, in Montreal at their headquarters. And um, yeah, I, I ended up staying at IARA for about seven years in, in various roles, right? Because IARA just gives you this exposure to so many airlines and uh, so many departments. So it was a great place to just hop from one department to the other and learn about safety, about quality, about auditing, about fleet management, about, um, you know, flight dispatching, things like that. And uh, I used to just, uh, whenever I used to visit airlines for whatever project we were working on, I used to take some time around it and spend time with some of their core airline functions. So I, I've spent a day at uh, the United Airlines Operations Center in, in Chicago. And, and I've seen that huge room where about a thousand people work and how busy it gets, right? Because they have about, you know, four or 500 aircraft that they're trying to move around, right? Um, then I've spent a day at the dispatch center in Paris for Air France, right? So I got these cool experiences um, and I really started to 
understand how an airline lives and breathes, right? Um, and then following that, I either wanted to work for an airline or an aircraft manufacturer because, you know, I felt like that's where my passion is. Um, so I, I ended up going to Bombardier Commercial Aircraft um, at the time in a strategy role. And um, at the time, the, the commercial aircraft wing for Bombardier had the C-Series, the Q-Series, and the CRJ, right? And um, I was part of the sales and marketing team. Uh, really loved uh, the experience I got there. Um, but unfortunately, in 2018, that commercial aviation um, you know, business was completely divested. Um, so I, at that point, I decided to um, to move to Pratt & Whitney, um, which is the world's largest engine manufacturer. And uh, I, I did a couple of different roles at Pratt & Whitney as well. I started off in a strategy role, but then moved uh, in, in 2000 to a, a more commercial role, right? Mm -hmm. Um, something that was, you know, just understanding the nuts and bolts of every single commercial agreement that uh, Pratt Whitney has with, with customers, et cetera. And that kind of gave me an insight into two very important things, right? Um, number one, I knew that I wanted my next role after that to be more customer facing, not, not, not heavy on the strategy side, but more on the customer side. And then number two, I wanted to get into more of the sustainability space, right? Um, since that's one of the biggest problems of our generation. Um, and like I said, I'm a, I'm a problem solver. I, I want to really work on solutions. And on the engine front, although there are solutions, none of them are, you know, really short term, right? You have to really invest a lot of, uh, a lot of money and, and get the right technology in the right space uh, in order to really electrify uh, the engine itself, right? So there's a lot of pilot projects going on, but I decided I, I needed something that was probably more on the immediate side. Um, and, and so I, I transitioned to 12, which is a carbon transformation company and essentially a SAF producer, a sustainable aviation fuel producer at this point, right? So um, my perspective was, you know, working on something that is going to add value to the sustainability curve and um, to actually work on solutions that can be implemented sooner rather than later, right? So yeah, um, that's uh, my professional journey in uh, in a lot more than the time that you had allocated to me. No, that's awesome. No, it's really cool to hear all the different experiences um, that you, you had along the way um, while having a passion for aviation. And I think that's a lot of what our podcast is all about, right? You can have a passion for aviation but there are so many different um, ways uh, the aviation, you know, jobs and and how the industry works. That you know, there's still some finding to happen in your career, right? To to what part of the specific uh, aviation industry is really your passion? And that's cool that you've been able to find that along the journey. Mm -hmm. Very cool. All right. So next question. Talking about airplanes, because that's what aviation's all about. Do you have a favorite airplane and what makes it your favorite? Uh, it's a tough one. So I, I think simply because of the experience that I that I mentioned, uh my, my first flight was was on a 747. I, I have to pick the Boeing 747-400. That is just it's it's so majestic. Um it, you know. It was called the queen of the skies for a reason, right? And, you know, all, times have changed and, and it, it it's no longer the most efficient aircraft anymore. And, and you know, it had four engines burning a lot of fuel, things like that. But but at the time, it broke barriers, right? It it led airlines cross oceans and, and it connected people. And, um, you know, cargo w was moved a lot faster. Um, so I think that aircraft really changed the game um for airlines for for people in, in in different parts of the world for business travelers as well right um yeah. and it was a very game changing aircraft from a technology perspective as well so i i would pick the 747 um but yeah there there's a lot of other aircraft really cool aircraft out there these days that that have changed the game in a similar way right but it just my my heart is too connected to the 747 and every time i see one I just stop what I'm doing and just look at it, right? It's it's that sort of a, yeah. an echo. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, and it's, it's great that they're still flying around. Um, 
with the newest variations. It's going to be a sad day when that airplane, the final flight of that airplane um, after so many decades, but at least we, yeah. we still have them for a while. So yeah. <laughs> cool. All right. So what part of aviation as we talked, you know, you've in your career, you've been uh, had a lot of different experiences in that. And like we, we kicked off a lot of people understand what they experienced through aviation firsthand of commercial personal transport. But what would you say from an aviation and the general public, what is the least known aspect or least understood part of aviation by the general public? Yeah, I think um, it's, it's, kind of the the nuts and bolts behind the scenes i would say it is not really known by the general public right and and if i can just put myself in 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 someone who's in a non aviation capacity who's just traveling right you, you see an airline you see an aircraft you see a gate you see a process in terms of boarding and and seat management and, and you know time management and things like that right but there's a lot that happens behind the scenes that really defines all of this and there's a method to the madness, right? And I think understanding that method is is key to, to traveling better as well. So um, there have been times when I've been stuck in London Heathrow, for example, right? And, um, you know, um, I've, I've been talking to some colleagues and they're like, oh yeah, why don't you take um, the, the next flight uh, to uh, to Asia, right? Because I, I've been transiting through and, and in my mind, I've been like, I can't because all of the Asia flights no longer take off for the next five hours, right? So, so I know in my mind the the banking of each of these airlines and 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 when they're when the eastbound happens and when the westbound happens, right? Um, and and in my mind, I knew that the actual solution would be to either fly to Frankfurt and take a Lufthansa flight to Asia or or get to another hub airport, right? Like, like Dubai or something, right? So I think just understanding alliances, understanding, um, you know, how some of these, these these aspects impact you as a traveler helps, right? And it, 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 it'll help in, in baggage. It'll help in um, kind of picking the, the, the right flights. It'll help in, in finding the lowest cost flights as well, right? Um, we often have this... Um, debate right in the industry whether hub and spoke is is cheaper for the for the traveler or point to point is cheaper for the traveler right and often it ends up that it is hub and spoke because you're routing all your aircraft through a central hub right but the argument there is what if that hub had exclusivity on certain flight legs then they could mm. price it at whatever they wanted right so you know, just understanding all of these dynamics and and you know um, how how they come together kind of helps as a traveler, right? And so I think this is something that you and I have talked about a lot, and this is something that we're hoping to unlock in these podcasts, right? Um, by talking to professionals in the industry and just providing a very basic, easy listening way to understand some of these concepts, right? So I think. These concepts are still um, very misunderstood, and 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 most folks don't don't know the nuts and bolts, right? But uh, hopefully, that's that's uncovered. Awesome! No, that's a great answer. Thank you for sharing that. So, so you must be like me and and think you're screaming at the television screen when you're watching the Amazing Race because the teams never know how they're going to get to the destination. It's just like, no, take this route and that route, right? Yeah, absolutely, right? And and it comes oh. naturally to us because we yes. know we know that if if let's say you're in you're stuck in Detroit, right? We know that the most common airline flying out of Detroit is Delta in, in essence, right? But not everybody knows that, right? Um so depending on if you're stuck in Detroit or or Denver or Dallas, right? The answer to which airline you're going to probably take is different, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so you kind of have to understand those mechanics. All right, producers of the Amazing Race, if you want to test Ashwin and uh, me on uh, on that talent, we're we're game. <laughs> All right, next question: What do you love most about aviation? There's a lot there, I know, but if you were to narrow it down to one thing, what is it that you love most about aviation? Uh, 
I just think that the ability to connect people um, is is by far, I think, the, the thing I love uh, about aviation, right? It's um, 50 years ago, if, if you had relatives in, you know, the other part of the planet, you really had to take three, four aircraft to, to go see them, right? And it would take a certain number of hours. And I think via technology, via aviation, via different, um, you know, advancements, we've cut that short, right? So now you, you're connected with, with folks because of Zoom and Skype and, and FaceTime. But, but also, if you want to see someone, if you want to attend conferences, um, it's, it's not that, that difficult, right? Um, at the most, you're, you're doing a one-stop um, journey, right? So I think the ability to give people that option is something that is very, very high value and something that only aviation can provide, right? No other industry can really, really do this, right? At the same time, you just, you know, take a step back, right? And and just look at, you know, there's about three, 400 people flying in a tin can at 30,000 feet, right? That's That's just magical, right? And and aviation has given us that, right? So, yeah, I, I think just, you know, there's so many cool things to uncover. Um, but yeah, by far, I think the connectivity aspects uh, are are my number one choice. Awesome. No, that's, I think all of us that love aviation, that's certainly a big attribute as to what we appreciate about it and, and enjoy about it. So, cool. Thank you for sharing. All right. Well, that this point um if you want to learn anything more about ashwin he had great answers for these questions but if there are any other questions you'd like us to to ask ashwin in the future please let us know um and then there's also the opportunity to dig a little bit deeper in any of the different topics and i think ashwin if you agree maybe we'll take another episode and dig a little bit deeper in some of those Sure. Yeah, happy to do that. Uh, but yeah, I, I think uh, we're very excited to interview other guests and and dive into other subjects within this really exciting industry. So yeah, we'll keep me as a as a backup, maybe. Awesome. <laughs> okay, so I think at this point we're kind of we'll wrap up the the the, the question and answer period, and and then we'll get into what will be one of our regular segment um elements right which is the trivia um so uh you know in each trivia round every guest will have a chance to prove their aviation knowledge it'll be fun we'll we'll all learn something new um and uh yeah i'm i'm really looking forward to this awesome all right so we'll we'll get into it here ashwin are you ready yeah i'm ready all right good luck to you your first question is airplane spotting related. How can you visually spot the difference between the DC-10-10 and the DC-10-30? The DC-10-10 and the DC-10-30, interesting. Um, I wanna say a, a combination of the, the tail assembly and the engine placement. Okay, I'm gonna show you a picture. Okay. Does this help? Can you see a noticeable difference between that on the left and that on the right? Okay, so the, the one on the left has um, an engine on, under each wing and one on the tail, correct? Correct. And the one on the right has the exact same. I'm okay. going to direct your attention to the landing gears. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's the key, I guess. Yeah, so the... The, the 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 landing gears there's three versus two um sort of um pivotal uh gear spots right right okay yep the dash 30 has the center landing gear uh because of the increased gross weight of the mm -hmm. dash 30 so it increased um weight capacity and range because of the fuel uh, it was able to carry. So with that added weight uh, came the need for an additional distribution of weight on the landing gear. So uh, yeah, I definitely did not know that. Yeah, All I right. Have, I have failed the AMG test in, in the first question, essentially. Uh, that's okay. It just puts me ahead. 
It's okay. <laughs> Thank you for guessing. All right, next one. Airline logos. This oh, former my. airline logo was nicknamed the Meatball, and it was depicted in black from 1967 to 1984, and it changed to red from 1984 to 1991. Okay, so um, the the actual logo didn't change, only the color of the logo changed. Correct. Correct. Okay. Um, this airline if, doesn't exist anymore either. It was the test. Huh. Okay, interesting. That I, I doubt I'll know this, but let me let me kind of think about it. Um, we like and to hear your thought process. Yeah, because I'm I'm looking at the 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 years very closely, right? Because you know how many airlines were alive between 1967 and 1991. Okay, I'll, I'll just put in like a weird little guess, probably, and say that it's Northwest. Oh, uh, close. Oh yeah. Okay. But not. <laughs> it's continental. Oh, it's continental. continental. Okay. Oh, okay. So they 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 changed this into the full tail logo at some point, I guess, because they, right. they yeah. B b before so in ninety one was the brand refresh that introduced the globe. Yep. Oh, okay. Wow, I would not have guessed Continental because I, I didn't even know that they had done a full brand refresh. Yeah. 1991. All Interesting. right. Interesting. I'm sorry for making these too hard. No, no, it, it, it's good. I, I, I'm sure somebody's learning something, including me. So. All right. <laughs> Next one, airplane types. So what was the name of the Boeing 717 before Boeing acquired McDonnell Douglas? So that airplane was actually developed by McDonnell Douglas and Boeing named it this Boeing 717, but it did not, it was not birthed, if you will, as the Boeing 717. Can you name what it was when it was McDonnell Douglas airplane? Yeah. I want to say something like the MD-95. Oh, well done. Well done. Yes. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> The MD-95, <laughs> the airplane that never, yeah, I don't think any were, de were delivered as MD-95s. I think by the time the airplane first delivered, it was already, a, it had been transitioned to a Boeing. So good job. All right. All right. Airport codes. So this Ooh. is an IATA three-letter acronym, or not acronym, sorry, identifier. BNA, Bravo November Alpha. It is a, in the United States. I'll give you a clue. I don't know. This is tricky because there, there's a couple of names that come to mind, but okay, I, I, I'm going to guess and say that this is Bloomington. Oh, that's a, that's a good guess. I This is a trick question. I've made... The B is silent. <laughs> so the B is silent. If, if with that, can you guess N A? Uh, not really. N A. Oh, Nashville. Jeez. Okay. Nashville, okay. Tennessee. Okay. Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah, I now we not... need to. We'll have to bring someone from Nashville onto the program to understand where the B comes from. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, it, because I, I think the the, the IKO music. codes, yeah, the IKO codes have some method, right? Because you have a like the initial letter for the continent, but the IRA codes are, yeah, weird. yeah, okay. there, yeah. All right, anyone from Nashville wants to come on the sh show, we'd be more than welcome to have you and help explain the three letter BNA where it came from. Okay. Last question. Did you know, well, first it's kind of a, a introductory question that not everyone may know. You know, Qantas, we synonymize with Australia. Um, but if you think about the name Qantas, it doesn't really mean anything. And that's because it actually was originally an acronym. So when the airline was formed, it was an acronym, Qantas. 
So, Ashwin, do you know what the acronym Qantas, Q-A-N-T-A-S, stands for? Well, I have no idea what I'm going to guess. Um, so since it was Australian origin, I'm going to guess that Q stands for Queensland. Um, yes. A might stand for air or something to that effect n might be national t might be transportation a might be kind of aviation and s might be services something like that oh i like your your thought process you you got pretty pretty close <laughs> so it is uh queensland yes a is for and northern territories aerial services Hmm. want us so wow interesting i did i did not know this and hopefully um yeah th this is cool i i did not know that this is how they started off yeah it's uh it's interesting how names you know start and, and a brand like this can start in a very geographical subsection of australia um but now this this same acronym now is known the world around um, as Australian in Qantas. So, well, good job, Ashwin. Thanks for giving the shot yeah. here, and uh, we're gonna put you in the the register to see uh, how you compare it to some of our other guests <laughs> on on the yeah. trivia. So technically, I got what one question absolutely correct out of five. So if there's anybody out there that can beat me, please come on the show and prove yourself. <laughs> absolutely. Reach out to us. We're welcome to have you. No matter what you do in aviation, we want to want to hear from you and um, and keep the show going. So awesome. Well, thanks, uh, Peter, for uh, putting those those really really tough questions together. Um, Sorry. <laughs> um, so hopefully, you know these these episodes uh, have given everyone an indication for why we started the podcast, and we've kind of introduced ourselves as well uh, through it. Um, yeah, and, and we're really looking forward to having more guests. I, I think we have a lot of guests already lined up. So we're very excited about that. Um, and they come from different backgrounds, different parts of aviation. So we're really excited to share that with everyone over the next few months. Um, Peter, you want to tell everyone how they can get in touch with us? Yeah, yeah. So feel free to subscribe to our hosting website, which is aeropedia.podbean.com dot com uh, or through the whichever channel you've viewed this uh, episode on feel free to like us and follow us and uh, give us feedback on what you'd like to see in future episodes um, but with that really appreciate you joining us this time and we really look forward to joining you on the next leg of our journey see you next time